Hello, and welcome to Fantasy Battle Report number two for the channel. For this upcoming combat here, we have High Elves versus Beastmen. My list, as seen here, uh, is pretty similar to the list from last time. The, the main changes are the uh, Minotaurs are uh, less uh, upgraded, and I have swapped one of the level one shadows for a level two beast. Um, otherwise, everything else is, is pretty much the same. My opponent's list is running High Elves. It is a, a Larial Banner of the World Dragon White Lion little uh, setup. Um, you can read most of his things here. Um, for the most part, it's a lot of shooting uh, and a uh, good, good magic group. The mobility isn't super high, but overall it's, it's pretty decent. My spells are as seen here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I got to pick most of what I wanted from death. <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, curse and wild form from beasts, which is okay. My opponent had these spells, so he has a larial on high, it looks like. And then he has a light, level one of light. Got shems. On to deployment. Uh, on the left side there, he has those are uh, not silver helms, but they are the the um, blood the the knights. The um, sorry, uh, da, 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 da. dragon princess. There we go. Dragon princess, a eagle in front, a detachment of ten archers. He realized it should have been ten and not twelve. And a minute in the game, you'll see a change. It doesn't make a big difference. A uh, block of sea guard, another block of archers, and his two bolt throwers are on the hill. His white lions with his BSB and Lariel with banner of the world dragon in front of them, an eagle and a frost heart phoenix. My deployment on the right is a pig, a tuskor chariot, a ungor raiders, another pig, tuskor chariot. And on my left, his his left, my right, is Ungor Raiders, Shard of the Herdstone, uh, Minotaurs with Doom Bowl installed. Uh, all of the uh, mages are hanging out behind the Herdstone. A 46 uh, Gore, extra hand weapons, a pig next to them, and another unit of Ungor Raiders in front. Turn 1 goes to the High Elves. And on the left, he moves up. And that's actually most of his movement. Magic is four to four. He casts Hands of Glory on his archers. Uh, this goes off irresistibly. Um, but uh, since it's on uh, Lariel in the uh, White Lions with the Banner of the World Dragon, no one, no one cares. So uh, that goes off and there's nothing I can do about it. We go into shooting. My center unit of Ungor Raiders dies. My left unit of Ungor Raiders gets beat up pretty good. And my right unit of Ungor Raiders takes a couple wounds. So, um, this normally doesn't bother most people, but you can see my uh, further most bottom shaman there uh, did fail his rerollable nine and decided to take off for the board edge. Uh, he didn't take anyone with him, but it was uh, minorly annoying. So, uh, and the leftmost unit panics, as you would expect, and they are taking off to the end of the board. So, that's the end of that turn. The Yes. So, in my turn one, my movement looks like such. On the right side, I move my gorse up, my minotaurs move up there full, um, my sham in there on the bottom rallies and everything else uh, moves up on this side. You can see my shaman on the left there is kind of hugging hugging the behind the minotaurs a little bit. He has the um, five point item from uh, the chaos marks on there that if he has cover of any sort he gets an extra cover penalty. So he's just trying to get in, make his soft cover hard cover by hanging out behind him. Uh, on my left um, not a lot of movement. My chariots move up a little bit, and the pig on the left moves up fairly aggressively to, uh, you know, just kind of uh, to get those 
get those dragon princes to come at him. Magic is 10 to 6 in my favor. Uh, Miasma is cast on the... Or attempt to cast Miasma on the Sea Guard. It is dispelled with dice. Uh, we get Wisdom's Wild Form is cast on the Minotaurs irresistibly. And... Oh, so it was a miscast, uh, something. But anyway, the uh, the caster takes a wound, and the rest of my dice are lost. Uh, shooting is pretty garbage, because I'm uh, beastman. So, we move on to turn two. <clears throat> turn two, no charges. The dragon prince is backed up, as you can see here. And the eagle flew around and behind my pig. Um, you can see him just measuring there to make sure they're an inch apart. Magic is 5 to 4. Hand of Glory is cast on the Sea Guard, and it gives them plus 3 to their Ballistic skill. And Drain Magic on the Minotaurs. But uh, Drain Magic is cast on the Minotaurs to take off their Wisdom's Wild form, but I had to spell that. <clears throat> we move into Shooting. Every single Sea Guard takes their shots at the Minotaurs. And what I'm showing here is that one wound happened. After all the hits of hitting on twos, I think, uh, one six is rolled for the wound. So that was that was pretty funny. Um, it would have been funnier if I had actually made my six up armor save, but I didn't, and that's okay. So there's just showing that I took a wound on a minotaur. That wound is not on the shaman. Um, this must be the archer's... Oh, the archers and a bolt thrower pick on this boy, pig, kill him. So that's fine. Um, and this one was shooting from the uh, the noble, the uh, the BSB in that white lion unit has a reaver bow or something of that nature, and he uh, plinks off all three of these guys. So normally that wouldn't be a big deal, but you can see the uh, gores right below there uh, fail their rerollable nine. Sweet, so uh, 40, 46 scores, my Beast Lord and my BSB decide they uh, don't want anything to do with something that can kill three Uncores. So, shoot, now that, that's really, really bad. So they, they take off and they're, they're way out of the game and I, ugh, you'll, you'll see why this really, really sucks later. And that's it, uh, starting the bottom of turn two. Um, no charges to declare. Um, looks like I must have restrained those Minotaurs successfully. Um, so, yep. Uh, move the Minotaurs up. Uh, move my chariot my pickup, as you can see here. Uh, <clears throat> my shamans moved around a little bit. Pig moved, and the gores rallied. Which, you know, was good, but holy crap, are they out of position. It's, it's bottom of two, and they're, they're back from where they started. Uh, magic is ten to five in my favor. Uh, trying to uh, su su survive and come back from the scenario a little bit, I decide, why don't we do an, a miasma on these guys? And, and I don't think my opponent realized why I was putting a miasma on them, because who cares if they have lower initiative, right? Well, I only get their initiative lowered by one. Uh, and then so I have moved my Shaman up, as you can see in the previous picture, and I attempt to hawk a, a big old purple sun through him. Um, but on the six dice I threw at it, I didn't roll enough to even beat the casting value of the big purple sun. So that was unfun. So that, uh, that kind of ends out magic there. Top of turn three. Um... The Dragon Princes charged into my boar. Um, I don't think we bother rolling this out um, with the Star Lance on the Noble in there. It just probably wasn't worthwhile. Uh, oh, no, never mind. Excuse me. I fled with the boar, and he catches the boar. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, otherwise, everyone else just sits still because he's just going to shoot a lot. Um, he does move the eagle a little bit. To magic, it is 10 to 6. He casts uh, Shem's Burning Gaze on my flying death wizard here, and he gets one wound off, which is fine. 
Um, Hand of Glory is dispelled with dice, and a Fiery Convocation fails to go off. So, that's okay. Uh, in shooting, he shoots everything at the Minotaurs. And he pulls off the back rank and puts a wound on the last non-musician Minotaur in the front line. So, that's, that's, that's okay. A couple of bolt throwers and a whole bunch of archers will do that too. Um, and, oh, and then I should, I guess he did, he must have shot something at this pig because he did a wound to him. So I guess not everything went at them, but pretty close. So, uh, bottom, bottom of turn three, I declare a charge with the Minotaurs into the Sea Guard. Standing and shooting, uh, pops out a couple more wounds, but they make it, so that's good. Um, I played this opponent once before, and it was uh, I, it, it was really fun to put the the Minotaurs, especially the Doom Bowl, into a a bunch of strength three, tough three elves. It's it's a it's a pretty funny situation because they're not going to do anything to him, and he's just going to eat them alive. So that's that's good. Pretty excited about that. Uh, my chariot charges the eagle and makes it in no problem on the left side there. And this is just a look to see the remaining of my right side, so you can see how far back my gores are, and how out of position they are. And that's just the other side of the board. So we go into magic. It is 10 to 6. Um, my flying death mage had flown way up, so he does... Oh, I start with the miasma on the white lines which he dispels because he's realized why I'm doing that. Uh, Caress on the bolt thrower goes off and kills bolt thrower really good. Um, I realize that I'm just out of range for fate of Buna on the other bolt thrower, so I kind of slap myself for doing those out of order. So I put fate of Buna on air Lariel, and it rolls out for four wounds, but, you know, banner of the world dragon, I just didn't have a really that useful of a target to do that on. So, that was whatever. And then I got Curse of Andra here off on the Bolt Thrower. So, that was the end of the magic phase. In combat, uh, the Minotaur, last remaining Minotaur, is killed before he can swing. But, um, as you can see, the Doom Bowl goes to town and picks up for where that Minotaur left off. Uh, of course, John, uh, I, I won combat, but he's steadfast, so he sticks. So, top of turn four, the Dragon Princess, I keep forgetting the name of those, excuse me, uh, reform, and turn to face my chariot here, which is fine. Um, no charges for this part, and on the other side, all of his... His archers on the left move up a little bit so that they can get into a uh, line of sight for the Doom Bowl. His white lions move over, so again, they can see the Doom Bowl. And his Frost Art Phoenix flies over, and his looks like his eagle flew over to chaff up my pick, which is fine. I, that's not too big of a deal to me. Magic is 10 to 7. Um, a Drain Magic is cast to get Curse off of the Curse of Andra off of the Bolt Thrower. And that's okay. Uh, Shims is dispelled. Hand of Glory is the Archers for a plus one ballistic skill. And Apotheosis is cast on something, but it's dispelled. Shooting uh, the Archers. Let's see. Bolt thrower. Oh, okay, so a Bolt Thrower shoots and gets one wound on my Shaman here. So he's down to one wound left, which is not good, but he's still there. Um, and looks like someone shoots at the chariot and they put a wound on him because he's down to three wounds left. That's, that's okay. Um, we go into combat and the Doom Bowl smacks off, looks like another six guys, which is pretty good. Uh, but of course, again, they're, they're steadfast with the reroll, so they're not going anywhere. Bottom of turn four, uh... I decide that there is no way my chariot is going to win this combat, nor is he going to kill anything to get me any points. So I just move my chariot as far forward as I can into these dragon princes. 
um, just so he gets kept out of the game as much as possible. Uh, it's just an 80-point chariot, and if I keep a couple hundred points of Dragon Princes from participating in the battle, that's pretty good. Uh, the only thing is I should have I angled him a little more to uh, smash him really into that rock when he did his overrun, um, just to really keep him out of position, but as long as he has to over, it didn't turn out too bad. So, uh, that's, that's my movement. Uh, you can see over here, just that chariot's come up a little bit. And over here, um, my gores have come up and he didn't successfully march block my pig. So my pig has come around so you can see both the bolt thrower and the side of the archers. So whatever it's decides is, is good for him. Uh, magic was 8 to 3. I cast Caress on the last Bolt Thrower, but I only get one wound. Um, then as standard, I tried to do uh, Miasma on the White Lions, which was dispelled, and I tried to cast a little Purple Sun, and that one didn't even go off. So, Purple Sun, not I mean, it's not killing me, but it's, it's, it's not doing anything else. So, we go into combat, and the Doom Bowl is doing what the Doom Bowl does. He's getting pretty pissed at this point. Um, smashing off another big block of guys and not taking any damage. Those uh, That marker next to the Doom Bowl are his frenzy markers, not his not any wounds. So he's he's won three rounds of combat at this point. So he's, he's pretty mad. Uh, that's it for the bottom of turn four. Top of turn five. Uh, the Dragon Princess charge the Chariot, and I just elect to hold. Um, just so that he doesn't make it very far. He can have that Chariot, that's fine. Everything in the kitchen sink charges my Doom Bowl, so the Archers on the left and the White Lions on the right all make it in. The remainder of his movements is him just flying stuff around. Um, putting the Frost Arc Phoenix in the way of that combat in case my chariot decides to get froggy uh, and just flies the eagle out of the way. Magic is five to four. And only thing that gets off is a drain magic. So just getting his, his um, he didn't have anything useful to drain, but it did get a, uh, a an extra ward save on his, on his white lines. So shooting, um, the archers put two wounds on this chariot, and that's all that happens. We go into combat, and bummer, my Doom Bowl does a, an exorbitant amount of work. Um, he puts all of his attacks into the archers, kills seven out of ten of them. Uh, you know, this is pretty good. I mean, he, he had a whole bunch of attacks. He's re no, he's not re-rolling the hit because he's hitting archers. But he is hitting them on threes and wounding them on twos, and he's just going to town. But um, all that static combat res against him, he still lost. He lost uh, by something like three or four, and he was too far away from my general and my BSB for a uh, reroll. So he flees and he gets run down. So the Doom Bowl only took one wound from the White Lions all swinging at him, but. Just for the combat res, he couldn't do enough wounds to pick up two charges, two flanks, three banners. It was just too much combat res to, to beat up. So he gets charged, he gets killed, and that's sad because he was having a good time. Uh, of course, the Dragon Princes beat up this uh, chariot, no problem. My turn, bottom O five. 5 the pig charges into the bolt drawer. Um... I declare a charge with the gore into the phoenix because, yeah, that would sound like a bad idea, but I do have a strength eight doom or a strength eight beast lord in there, who is you know a pretty good candidate for smacking around that bird, even if he is going to be at strength minus one or whatever it's going to be. Um, so I figured, what the hell? And my chariot charges the archers. So um, my gore failed their charge. The Chariot succeeds in his charge, but he takes uh, another wound on the way in, so he's down to one. And then on that first picture, my pig made his charge. So, we move into magic. It's nine to five. <clears throat> I decide to 
Soul Blight the Phoenix because there's not a lot I can usefully do, I guess. Um, then I attempt to caress the Phoenix. Uh, yes, I Soul Blighted it so I could hopefully caress it or uh, anything else to it, but I uh, went to cast Caress the Phoenix and roll double ones. So that was awesome. Um, I couldn't cast any more spells with my level 4. So I went to Miasma on somebody, and it was a spell. So, we go into combat here. Uh, my chariot goes in. He does 5 impact wounds, takes off the back rank of archers. But, um, 3 or 4 archers get to attack back, and they put through the 1 wound that needs to kill the chariot. So, sad. He doesn't survive. The pig takes out his bolt thrower, no problemo. And... That's that. No one other combats. So, we're moving in top of turn six. Turns are going pretty fast, obviously, at this point. Um, just a little reshuffling. He moves up his Dragon Princes for whatever fun. He turns his White Lions to face my Gore Horde. Here's the other side you can see. Um, this is where I think my opponent made a, a small mistake. And you'll see this in a little while. He has plenty of chaff uh, to put in between me and those white lions. Now, no, no, those gores aren't going to go in there, and they're not going to kill all the white lions. But there are some characters in the front row that can be killed, and the points can be achieved. He, he had nothing, nothing to really gain by, by even allowing this combat to happen. He could have marched those archers up. He could have put that eagle in the way. Um, just about anything, just to, just to say, no, you're not going to touch this block, right? I mean, it, it's, you're not going to beat that block, but those those gores can still kill some guys. So, um, see what this is. Magic was three to one. Uh, you got to drain magic off and the failed hand of glory, which I assume is what these two dice are showing. Archers shoot. And they kill four gores, and that's that's fine. And then, not a big deal. So, uh, bottom of turn. Oh, these are a little out of order. I apologize. So this, oh, maybe not. Okay. I don't have a picture of start of turn six, but <clears throat> my gore declare a charge on his white lions, and he holds. That's, that's fine. Um... Uh, but my gores make it into the white lions. So that's that's pretty sweet. Um, magic was actually seven to seven, which is which is pretty atrocious when you have a uh, uh, what is that thing called the herdstone there? Like I should always have more magic, but anyway. Uh Wisdom's Wild Worm was dispelled, so that's about the end of the end of that magic. Um, so we move right into combat. And I don't declare any charges, or I don't declare any challenges, because I'm actually happy with this lined up. So my Beast Lord here is on the corner, and his Noble was on the corner. So, awesome. This is exactly where I want him, because my Beast Lord is swinging at strength 8. I'm not swinging any magic weapons at him. So, he, he's sure, sure he's going to, whatever ward save he has, is all he's going to get. Unless, of course, he's got like a 1-up armor or something. But even then, it's, it's pretty good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smack him down. So... I don't declare a challenge, but he declares a challenge with his BSB here. And this is his BSB on the corner, Noble BSB. And I said, well, sure, that's fine. You want to declare a challenge. I'll accept with my Beast Lord, who's right next to you. And then he goes, oh, oh, crap. And yeah. So uh, my Beast Lord gets in a challenge. Everyone else is just smacking around as they normally would be. And as you can see in this picture, my Beast Lord smacks the crap out of his BSB. Um, just a little bit of overkill, nothing terrible. Um, the other benefit is my gore kill off his level one caster. So that's, that's two characters I got out of this block that he wouldn't have had to give me. Um, if he would have just put something between my gore and him. Um, I mean, there was, I, I, of course I, I won combat. You can see he killed a bunch of gore, but I still won combat, but... It didn't matter. They weren't going anywhere. They're white lions. They're stubborn. Yeah, they don't have the re-roll anymore because I killed the guy. But um, lucky it was turn six. If not, I would have probably got to punk Ariel next turn, which would have been pretty funny. But anyway, um, that's how the game ended, which was, uh, you know, not 
not not a great game, but it was a fun way to finish it at least for me to get some <laughs> to get to get some a uh, 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 happy feeling after that pretty solid trouncing. So, oops, sorry. So uh, it turned out to be a high elf victory. The elves earned themselves one thousand. Oh, excuse me. This is, this is actually incorrect. No, this is right. The, the elves earned themselves one thousand forty nine points. So. He got everything on the board that wasn't my pig. Um, all of my mages survived. My beast lord, my BSB, that huge block of gore were untouched. Otherwise, everything else on the board he got. He got my Doom Bull, my Minotaurs, and all of my chaffy things. So, not as bad as it could have been, um, since there's so many points tied up in that gore block. But he still did a really good job of cleaning everything else up. I earned 554 points, which is pretty bad. Um, all I really got were his bolt throwers, and then his BSB, and his uh, mage. Um, so not, and, and, and an eagle. Not not a lot of points. Um, it, it would have been a much worse defeat, but it was still a pretty bad defeat. So it was about a 500 point difference. So it was a solid, it was a solid defeat for the Beastman. But again, like I said, it's not as bad as it could have been, just because I was able to get a hold of those characters in the last turn. Uh, some notes about this combat, excuse me, um, I had, the game before this, I had run with the, uh, minotaurs with extra hand weapons and, and, a, a banner in there, and I, and I took that away from them, because they keep dying and they don't, they don't do anything with any of that stuff, so I took that away and I put it into, um, upgrading one of my, uh, herdstone batteries to a level two and making a beast and thinking hey I can throw out a Wissens or some other stuff just for the hell of it um, I'm not I'm not really that happy with that I think I'm gonna put it back down to a level one and put those points into something else um, I just it, if I'm fighting a game like I fought that time there isn't enough stuff I can do with death to earn as many magic dice back as I would like so I don't always have an exorbitant amount of dice to throw all over the place. Especially not when I need to cap make a 9 value casting on a level 2 just to get a, a buff off. Now, I mean, Wiss and Wild form is pretty sweet, but uh, Miasma is pretty sweet too. So, and it's a lot easier to cast. Um, like I said, in the next the next point here, I'm glad, I'm glad I dropped some of that stuff off the Minotaurs. I made them a little cheaper. It made it a little easier to swallow the pill when they're, of course, all die from shooting. That's That's okay. I'm, I'm glad they, one of them almost made it across the board. I think his impact hit killed an elf. So, hey, you know, that's something, um, I guess. So that's that's fine. Um, some other notes about myself. I need I need to practice unit support. I, I end up, I end up splitting my units up too much. And, and I think, I think that ends up getting them eaten. Like in this game, the Doom Bull got eaten because he was by himself. Now, because of this next point, I should try not to fail re-rolling nines. If, if I could practice this, you know, if, if it was possible to practice not failing re-rollable nines, that would be sweet. But I'm not probably sure that it is. So, uh, I don't know. Th this was just bad luck. I mean, that was just a, that was just a bummer. So there's not a lot I'm going to be able to do about this. But I, I, I need to practice getting, getting my units together more, keeping my minotaurs and my gore together. And probably just starting off on the front of the line. I, I pushed my units back a little bit from the from as far up as they could be because I said, well, I don't want to get shot at by the sea guard the first turn. Now, I should have just accepted it. I should have put those gore and those minotaur right in front of them all the way up first turn so I could try to be into them by turn two. That would have been a better use of them. I would have been able to get some more points. Um, I just wasn't able to do magic dominance or anything else that would really really help take care of that. So anyway, um, thanks for watching. I hope this one has come a little shorter than my last one. Um, please put any comments or anything else you want um, about this video uh, for anything you think I could do better. Um, speak more clearly, speak faster, speak slower. Uh, anything like that would be great. Um, otherwise, uh, I will put out more battle reports, but at most I probably get to play one game a week. So it's, it's not necessarily a time constraint. It's more about whether there are people to play constraint because well, anyway, so I, I don't get to play a lot of games, but I'll try to get battle reports up uh, as frequently as I can, at least maybe try to do one a week. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.